Hello Internet and welcome to my promised US Travel Diaries number 4 where I intend to finish our first trip in the year 2000 and also do a sort of the highlights of my trip in 2005 with my grandparents. The reason I'm not going to do a full walkthrough of 2005 is that most of the pictures we have are either just on paper or lost and also it's the one that to a certain degree I actually remember the worst again because I don't have the pictures around me to take a look at them and sort of remember what happened so I'm mostly going to give you impressions and some highlight from that uh, trip so we're going to do it all in one and then next time I return to this subject I will start with the sort of real huh, road trips not that these weren't real but the really long ones that I have been doing with my father starting in 2010 where well look forward to that there will be a lot about um, feet hurting in the 2010 one but until 2000 finish 2005 highlights. Enjoy! Leaving uh, Gettysburg in Pennsylvania, there wasn't that much left for the trip. We were basically going to spend only two days traveling from Gettysburg back to Knoxville, where we were going to fly home. The first trip was to Lexington in Virginia, a town that I have since come to find very interesting and want to return to because of its historical, architectural and just general, well, it's a very pretty town and it has all these interesting parts. It has the Virginia Military Institute, the Washington and Lee University. It's the gravesite of Robert E. Lee and several other Civil War personages, but Back then, my interest was not as peaked as it would later be because even though, I, as I said, my interest in American history was awoken by uh, the Gettysburg battlefield, what the hotel in Lexington had was probably the best pool I've ever seen in an American hotel. Half indoor, half outdoor, somewhat heated, but at the same time pleasantly cool. So, uh, yeah... I must sadly admit that despite my historical, well, let's call it interest and acumen, I spent most of the day in Lexington frolicking in the pool with my sister and my cousins while uh, the adults, well, I was 20, but the real adults apparently, spent their time checking out uh, Lexington, something I have regretted since but have fortunately later managed to at least to a certain degree manage to make up for on later trips what i do remember about lexington however was that it was the first time that i visited a walmart a store that i have since become you know very happy about there's nothing really special about that it's just that i don't know it's part of those memories that come it was to a certain degree, the time where I realized just how big America is. Yeah, yeah, I have seen the big sites from Blue Ridge. I had seen the big sites from Shenandoah Skyline. I had been to Washington, D.C. However, I walk into a Walmart, which was a average-sized Walmart. I don't even know if it was what they would today call a superstore or a mega store or anything. It was basically a decent-sized Walmart in a fairly small town in central Virginia. And it is about twice as big as anything you could find in Denmark uh, at convenience stores, except for possibly one shop in the entire country I could mention. So yeah, it was kind of like, yeah, this is America, and that was fun. Later, of course, I have shopped at Walmart so many times I'd forgotten it. And by now, by the way, I can say this to anyone who doesn't particularly care about fashion, Every single piece of clothing I own basically is bought in Walmart and for so little that it is amazing. Leaving Virginia, we headed back down to Kentucky where we was to have our last sort of sightseeing experience because we wanted to go visit the David Crockett State Park where David Crockett was born and where a replica of his uh, birth cabin is still standing. It was on that trip that we first experienced our really big 
major, major rainstorm. And this actually had some uh, interesting things. This is where I learned how to drive in American rain. Because there was us, which means my mom, my dad, my sister and I in one car. And my grandparent in another who wanted to go see that. My The other part of the family was heading instead uh, directly for the hotel in Knoxville. And... We were going, and then it started raining. And then when I, that was when I realized that rain in America is not rain in Denmark. The wildest thunderstorm in Denmark could only barely sort of keep up with what we saw here. And this was, as I have, of course, later learned, just basically an average day of rain in many American states. We were driving out there and it rained so hard that eventually the only thing we could basically see was the light of the cars in front of us and the light of the cars behind us. Now, right behind us was my grandparents and we followed the map, turned the right places and eventually the rain stopped and... The persons behind us, or the car behind us, we thought was my grandparents, turned out no longer to be my grandparents. Somewhere in the rain, it had been so low visibility that we had lost my grandparents in a wrong turn. Now, we did look shortly uh, after them, but of course, it was utterly pointless. So instead, we went to the uh, state park, hoping that they would either be there already or... If nothing else, we could then find them at the hotel. This was in the days before cell phones, after all. And, well, we really didn't have any real way of contacting them. We went to the state park. I can, you know, it was pretty cool. I can say, go visit it. It's not, uh, you know, there's not a lot to see. There is the cabin, there is the riverside. And it's all very interesting without being hugely sort of um, entertaining but for anyone with any interest in American history or David Crockett you should definitely go see it however we went there and we saw it and all the time we still didn't see hide a hair of my grandparents until we were about to leave the park when they then drove into the parking lot so yeah we were reunited but that was actually a for us uh, younger folks a somewhat uh, semi-scary moment because it was just like what if our grandparents are now lost somewhere in rural Tennessee without any idea of how to get home again uh. anyway we were reunited and eventually made it back to the hotel at Knoxville where we relaxed for the rest of the day went out for a one last meal at an American restaurant and the next day packed our stuff returned to the airport and with a stopover in O'Hare in Chicago, finally returned to Denmark, our first trip over, but at least for my case, a love and admiration for America and its people and its history and its countryside and everything had been kindled that now, 17 years later, still burned with a fiery passion I cannot hope to extinguish. We now skip to 2005. The 2005 trip was a three-week trip uh, going, basically going over a lot of the territory, uh, some of the territories we've already seen, but also adding new stuff. It was me and my grandparents, my mother's parents, the same that had basically uh, created and been responsible for the trip in 2000. And we went from New Orleans to Washington with a, another trip up to uh, Gettysburg because I really wanted to see the battlefield again. We started in New Orleans and we got our first look at the city. This was about four months before Katrina. So I have seen it both post and, well, pre and post hurricane. And I have to say that that is an interesting comparison, but uh, since it's about that trip, what I can say is that the town uh, truly fascinated me with its mix of Americana and Creole and, of course, the history and culture of New Orleans is still amazing. I introduced my grandparents to um, Hard Rock Cafe on that trip, which they 
became very pleased about. Uh, we saw the town through a buggy ride and we walked the town as much as my then 70 plus something year old grandparents legs could carry them. All in all, I fell in love with New Orleans as a town and I have been back many, many times since, even if it was also on that trip, of course, that we in the middle of the road uh, met a fairly, how to put it, inebriated um, middle-aged lady who decided that I was worthy of hmm, shaking her booty at and, uh, well, removing her top to ask me if I felt like she was worth it. I, she wasn't worth it. One thing we did do and that I can uh, appreciate and tell everyone that they should try was to take the riverboat cruise from the New Orleans docks and downriver towards the um, Gulf of Mexico and then of course returning up. There is a lot of things to see of interesting stuff, history, culture, everything on the riverboat and of course just sailing on the riverboat hearing the captain explain or the tourist guide explain what there is to see is always interesting. Other than that, I can of course only speak too high about the New Orleans food culture that I first discovered during this trip. I will not say very much more about New Orleans this time because I will return to it in later installments where we had a better chance, me and my dad, to explore not just the parts of New Orleans that my grandparents couldn't simply walk to but also the sort of New Orleans suburbs and the nature around it. Anyway, New Orleans, great place. I fell in love with it. I really uh, want to go back yet again very shortly. Second big city we visited and the second sort of impression I remember from that trip I want to talk about is our visit to Nashville. Now, I like Nashville. Even whether or not you're interested in music or whether or not you're interested in history and again culture, Nashville is definitely a place you should visit. I do, however, uh, say that try to take a one of the guided bus tours around. I have since been there in car, which is um, something I will talk about in a later video, and that was a bit problematic, though of course it was also raining like crap that day, but do try to take a guided bus tour. It's really interesting. They're hop on, hop off, so you can see all the stuff you want to see anyway. It'll take you through the historic downtown. It'll take you up through the musical areas and tell you all sorts of stories. Like any other hop on, hop off bus, that's of course very interesting. But the one in Nashville it ranks very highly in my opinion. It was really, really good and the driver was really, really interesting. What I also remember about Nashville is sadly that it was in Nashville we were told that after a long fight with uh, illness my grandfather's oldest sister had died and we basically wanted to go out to cheer him off with a steak dinner because my grandfather had spoken a lot in the run-up to this particular uh, trip about wanting to try a really good American steak dinner. For one reason or another, we never ha got one in the first week uh, from uh, New Orleans up to Nashville, but now with uh, this whole situation, we wanted to get one in Nashville. Sadly, it was Sunday, and for one reason or another, we couldn't in our area find a single restaurant open that served steaks. I don't know what it was with Nashville in the spring of 2005. No place that served steaks was basically open in the area we lived. Now, we could, of course, again, this was before the internet, before smartphones, for us at least, before, uh, you know, laptops. But again, still, we could probably have found some restaurants if we looked long enough but we drove around for an hour looking for restaurants that served decent steaks and we ended up eating at a mcdonald's i love you nashville but that's just not cool man not cool at all still nashville is an interesting place anyone should definitely go there for the history for the food for the despite the mcdonald's i have i have eaten other days in nashville and food was fine but 
we had, it was the second day in Nashville we did this, but go there, visit it. It was very interesting. I like the area. Following Nashville, we took a interesting uh, route where we drove down through both Carolinas to uh, Myrtle Beach in South Carolina. That was I wanted to see for I had heard it was an interesting beach town. It is. I have since spent uh, a uh, quite a few times in Myrtle Beach on various trips. It is a very interesting sort of beachside resort town that you otherwise don't really see in America, but is very you know common in particularly the Mediterranean areas of. Europe. So if you have any kind of interest in that, Myrtle Beach is a fine place to go for beach, sun, fun, and, you know, relaxation. But anyway, we drove up through North Carolina out at the coastline on US-17, an interesting trip, almost out uh, near the ocean for, for a lot of the way, and then in through some parts of North Carolina you don't otherwise see, up through Virginia, past Norfolk, and back to Washington, D.C. Because, you see, the other part of the family, my uncle and aunt and their children, had moved to the United States at this point, where my uncle was a NATO attaché from the Danish military. So we were to visit them in the outskirts of Washington, more specifically out near Vienna and Tyson's Corner, if anyone knows where that is. We did, and it was very interesting uh, to see, you know, it was sort of my first time visiting an American home, even if it was expat Danes living there. But it was very interesting. We met our family that I hadn't seen for some years at this uh, at this point since they were over there and then we took the trip up to Gettysburg uh, we revisited Gettysburg I again rekindled my love affair with this the first place that I sort of really felt that yeah United States and its history could definitely be something for me. And then we went back down to Washington, D.C. This time, we my feet was a lot better, and I actually saw quite a lot of Washington. My grandmother's feet, sadly, was bad, so she spent a lot of time in the hotel. But my grandfather and I, despite him at the time being in his mid to late 70s, Trunched up and down the Washington Mall, exploring all that uh, particular area, checking out the White House, looking at the Capitol, visiting the Museum of Natural History to a degree that I hadn't had the chance to do back in 2000. We also visited the Museum of the uh, Native American, the Indian Museum, if you will. That, however, was to my grandfather, who had truly, truly looked forward to seeing that, a tremendous disappointment. There was, as he said, far more about the white man and its and his or our effect on native cultures than there were about the native cultures in and of itself. This might have, to, I have to agree with him. It's not that I don't want to take on the blame for what happened during that particular culture clash, but when I went to uh, go to a museum to see something about Native Americans, I would really like to see stuff about Native Americans and not about various Spaniards, Englishmen, French and others who basically had interactions with them. It can have changed a lot later and it can have become very much better, but that was probably the worst um, experience in an American museum I have ever had. If you want to see American museums about uh, Native Americans instead, go, for instance, as I have already said before, to Cherokee and check the museum there or several others of those kind. The one in Washington, simply not worth it because it simply doesn't seem to care about the subject that it purports to talk about. Overall, though, the trip again confirmed that Washington is a town that I could never live in, don't particularly want to spend too much time in, but that I feel everyone with any kind of interest in America, American culture, American history, basically anything to do with America should at least try to spend some time being a tourist in. It is, for that purpose, a very, very amazing place that I look forward to returning to once again in the future. After Washington, the trip was again ready to be over. My second visit to the United States, my second road trip in the United States. We packed our stuff, left the hotel, which was Hilton, 
uh, Washington, a very great hotel for actually fairly de- uh, decent prices for a Hilton, went to Dole's airport and boarded a plane back to Copenhagen. A second trip was over. The last trip I was on with my uh, grandparents, by the way, the actual last vacation I've ever had with my grandparents. So that is very important to me, even though uh, both of them are actually still alive. But once again, I was confirmed in how much I love America, how much I adore this country, and that my future definitely were there to a very powerful degree. How powerful a degree that would be will, of course, be obvious next time when I begin the trip of 2010, where me and my dad uh, took a round trip out west. First time I set foot basically on the western side of the Mississippi. Even if we were so far out west, we didn't actually get close to Mississippi. Well, that was it. I hope you found it at least a little bit interesting. I realize this might have been the most boring episode I possibly could have made. Not that much happened again after all in the last stage of 2000 and 2005. As I said, couldn't really be done as detailed as I would want to be. However, if you have any interest in this, look forward to the next one because 2010 is a trip I have many uh pleasant memories from also many unpleasant memories from well a few unpleasant memories from and a lot of interesting stories this is where truly my american experience and joy began and has experienced since then but yeah next time i will do some history not sure exactly what but some history will be taking place next friday until then i have been the sage and i wish you all A very happy day.